Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay, let me just paint the book that I'm going to be reading. How are you? How is everybody? Um, I hope you have had a great reading weekend. I don't know why do people um miss, not mispronounce, but they spell, let me change this. Okay. Hello. Finally. Okay. Hi. Happy Monday. How are you? How was the reading weekend? Hi, I'm Gela. Hi, Simule. Hi, everybody that is going to join me. Um, today, I decided to read... Um, from pages of um i'm not gonna read like like start from the beginning and 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 so i'm gonna read from misbehave by malebo sipudi uh, this was a, a read um i read it in 2017 but i go back to it now and again um mainly to remind myself that I must love myself, you know, and I must value myself. So this book reminds me that you need to value yourself. You need to love yourself. You need to be kind to yourself. And yeah, uh, guys, please forgive my kids in the background if you can hear them. But yeah, there's fights downstairs. How are you? Have you guys read Misbehave? Um, I do have it covered, as you can see. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, I'm going to read, uh, like from, actually, I'm going to start the book at the first part, and then I'll go to a, a part of mine that I enjoyed. Because um, she writes, these are like essays. Um, let me read the, the contents. Uh, the first one is her story, one word. And misbehave one word without the s but the book title is misbehave but yeah one of the chapters is misbehave one word without the s um there's love regulated hashtag dear black men uh, help yourself to some sexism you may now kiss your husband whose image exactly um and s e x in caps and there's beyond quotas beyond the quotas and the elusive modern woman and self-care as misbehavior that's my favorite part um but i'm gonna start with her story and then i'll move um to hopefully there will be time but yeah welcome to everybody that has just joined me i'm reading from malevo sepudi's misbehave um please let me know in the comments while i read if you have read the book and what did you think of it i think this book has um it's like it needs to be read by every woman every every man um if i could i would actually buy it for everyone i know <laughs> um but yeah it has also um had a life of its own i think i need to check with tabiso and malebo how how many reprints has this gone uh, gone to but yeah, um, uh, you also need to get this book or order it from um, the Blackbird Books page directly, which is um, blackbirdbooks.africa. They are now selling the books, the books directly off the website. So blackbirdbooks.africa. Uh, um, let's support Tabiso and keep Tabiso uh, in business. 
um, Blackbird Books has done so much for um, for lit for the literature space and for Black people and Black Black stories and ensuring that Black stories are are like out there. So please um go and follow at Blackbird Books underscore Africa as well on Instagram. Um yeah. Uh, CD says I've read the book and what a gem. You're right. It should definitely be read by everyone. Um, just by reading the reading the contents of the book, it's like I hope I gave those of you who haven't read it, um, like a little idea. But yeah, the first part. Uh, I like how every chapter or every essay is introduced by, um, hi Queen. Every 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 uh essay is introduced by a quote, uh, so or, or, or a quote or a a word and an explanation of the word. Um, no, you haven't missed the the reading. Um, I just started now. Um, I'm gonna start now. I was just introducing the book, and then I'm gonna continue for the next twenty minutes or so. Hi, Jane. Um, so the, her story, the essay, her story, she, uh, the, the side, she explains what patriarchy is, um, pronounced patriarchy, uh, it's a noun, the rule of the father, um, a social system in which men appropriate all, all social roles and keep women in subordinate positions, which has managed to survive for so long because its chief psychological weapon is its universal universality as well as its longevity um, or a system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it um, you know what let me just take out the charger and put in my mic just so you guys can hear clearly because oh I can hear the twins downstairs guys um, it's one of the books that is so well protected on my shelf. That is from Yam Gela. Um, yes. I, that's why I even covered the book. Like, I mean, it's on my shelf. It's not going anywhere because I'm not borrowing anyone, any of my books um, anymore. Except the people that I really, really trust. And the people that I know will really, really take care of the books. But, um, yeah. I also agree, Yamkela. I am. This is like a prized position, and I mean, look at the, like, there's so many writings in between. The, <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's why I think everyone must read this book. Um, besides the fact that it's written by a queen and it's published by a, like another queen, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's a gem. Uh, okay, her story. If you were to tell me 10 years ago that the words in this book would be mine, I would have laughed. Looking back at my life, I see a substantial evolution of consciousness in how my beliefs were shaped. This is something that many people grapple with. In light of this, the continuous questions I had in my mind while writing this book were, how do I continue writing when my views today do not resemble the ideology I had 10 years ago. Would my reader not think I was inconsistent? But another voice added, if you did not change because of suffering from marginalization, it would be scary. In fact, that is why you are meant to write. Write about the changes. This is part of telling your story. And so I tell my story as truthful as I can. My relationship with myself existing in my body has been a complex one. Physically, spiritually, economically and politically, I have had to grapple with reconciling my existence on this earth. In tracking these complexities, I have noticed that black women have been prominent in assisting and crafting who I am and how I analyze my uni my environment. Sorry. Uh, Bookaholic Queen, hello. Uh, she says she loved this book. Yeah. My mother sticks out as one of these women who influenced my thinking in ways that scare even her. 
From my earliest memory, I remember studying her in a way that I could easily formulate into theory. My childhood memory does not serve me well, but it has granted me a vivid memory of an experience with my mother in 1992. From 1948, South Africa had been um, embroiled in an in an evil regime called apartheid, which marginalized and segregated people according to their race. In March 1992, a referendum to end apartheid was held, brewing mixed reactions from those who benefited from it. But this signaled freedom for my parents and those who had suffered under the regime. Our country was experiencing a transition. A kind of uncertainty came over South Africans who had wrestled with the chains of oppression. The possibility of a new dawn filled the air. Even with these moments, it was not unusual to experience adults trickling into our house in Ennerdale, a town situated south of Johannesburg, filling the air with laughter while melodies painted hearts with joy. A sudden groove developed in my parents' hips, always finding a moment to celebrate. One ordinary Saturday in 1992, the sun had completed its shift and you could hear the crickets tuning the air with their whistles, a mild breeze joining in on the jingle. My soul hovered above our lounge while the tunes slowly seduced my tiny eight-year-old ears, tickling what was then my unknown relationship with music. I washed my mother with glee, her curled pitch black hair twinkling under the lights and complimenting her black chiffon dress. Her face and teeth sparkled, reflecting mysterious stories. She threw her head back and like a flower in the wind, swirled to the tunes of Brenda Fassi's I'm Your Weekend special. The vision of my mother under the spell of the echoing tunes was breathtaking. My eyes fixed on her soft, delicate face, hers deep and content landed on mine breaking her face into a smile the music intensified and my mother clicked her fingers as she slowly twirled down and back up again i stood there in awe my mother was the most beautiful woman i had ever seen and through what i would come to observe the strongest she taught me never to relent she encouraged me to always seek the truth and walk in my power. Despite her own need to be strong, she taught, she taught me not to define power as strength. Instead, she gave me a different kind of power. She taught me to say no. She taught me to cry. My mother has always been resolute in every project she's tackled. I have watched her fight against the discrimination of workers fight against the policing of women's reproductive rights, fight against the withdrawal of basic health care needs for black people, and fight against the marginalization of black students. She will fight for what she believes in and won't back down until an outcome is realized. Because of this, she taught me to question, to fight for what is right and for what I believe in, even if it goes against all that she believes in. She taught me to raise my voice, stick to my stance, no matter how unpopular it may be. And when she tells me I'm going overboard, which she always does, I gently remind her that Ukamba lufuze ibliza, but twice more potent, and she laughs and claps her hands once. It is through this anchoring that I observe the world in a way that challenged the external conditioning I received. One of the prominent things I noticed around society was how I was treated versus how men were treated. It did not make sense at all. No matter how you tried to live your life, it was not enough as a black woman to, to choose how to live without facing some sort of resistance. Growing up, watching my mother resist left a huge dent in my consciousness. Through her strength, I would watch her retiring in the evening on the couch, tired and counting her delicate breath carefully. Pushing against the usual flow is not easy, and rather than succumbing to what is expected, 
There are those who continually fight for their own liberation and for the liberation of many others who have been marginalized. For women, I found that one of the fights was against patriarchy. I must confess, I have not always known what patriarchy stood for. I did not even know how to pronounce it properly. I kept on saying patriarchy until I was corrected. It's pronounced patriarchy. Although the original definition denotes the rule of the father, on a wider context, it is a social system that has taken shape all over the world. It is a system that is shaped by the victimization of women by men, and it constantly generates ideas of what an ideal woman looks like and how she should behave. It is so deeply entrenched in our minds that it can be difficult to identify as a system that undermines women. It's sly, catching most of us off guard, and this is the reason it gets passed on generationally. Ugh. It, pr it reproduces and evolves, co-opting women and making it seem like things have changed. I grew up with patriarchy all around me, without it ne without it ever needing to be explained. It was just there and seemed to be the norm. Because the church formed a big part of my upbringing, it shaped my outlook on the world. Despite what I was told outside of the church, it was this institution that defined how I interacted with my environment. I had come to accept patriarchy. Okay, I think she, uh, yeah, I, I have come to accept patriarchy. That this would not be for, for long as I too took on the baton to continue the fight against patriarchy. This fight means questioning all our social norms. It means interrogating assumptions that leave no room for imagination that we could do things differently. Not everything that appears to make perfect sense is the truth. Oh, Queen says, I felt that sigh in my gut. I can definitely relate. Yeah, there are so many chapters in this book. Yo, like, guys. Um, but yeah, let me continue. I come to I've come to accept patriarchy, but this would not be long for long, as I too took on the baton to continue the fight against patriarchy. This fight means questioning all our social norms. It means interrogating assumptions that leave no room for imagination that we could do things differently. Not everything that appears to make perfect sense is the truth. We might benefit from asking uncomfortable questions in order to conceptualize alternative ways of living. It has not been easy figuring out how to write this book and what to include and exclude. But what was important was that I tell my story whichever way. Sorry. I no longer want to censor myself out of fear. Many voices have been silenced, filtered, erased, misplaced, edited, hidden, ignored, and my silence would add to the list of these voices. But, as Laurel Thatcher Ulrichs wrote, well-behaved women seldom make history. The slogan resonated with the transition towards owning my life. When I first encountered it, I wrote it down in my journal and I knew that I would have a story to tell. Toni Morrison tells us that if there is a book you want to read, then write it. With this book, I share my personal trick through the transition from a well-behaved black woman to one who misbehaves. While writing this, I had my unborn children in mind because I do not want them to be born into a world that still perpetuates oppression. If they are born and the world continues to be an unsafe place to exist in, they must know that there are, there are systems such as patriarchy that are committed to wringing their life out of sexually marginalized bodies. They must know that they should not be defined by these, these systems and resist confirm, conforming at all cost. Hello, Blackbird Books. Why didn't you say you're reading Misbehave? Well, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, but I did. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I just decided like five minutes ago. Uh, I'll explain why later once I'm done. Uh, where was I? Okay, my children. They must know that they should not be defined by these systems and resist conforming at all cost. I drew on my own experiences and recalled the details as best I could. When memory failed me, I engaged those who could fill, the, fill in the gaps. I've also, with permission, used stories narrated by different individuals. Because I share many of my encounters with different people, I've changed their names where possible, but have obtained permission from those I did not change. Although not a memoir or autobiography, I made misbehave personal because I believe there is much power in being open and honest about our lives. These are just experiences that I use to share the changes that took place in my life. However, I acknowledge the privilege I hold living in this body of mine. It is with this privilege that I do not con that I do not claim to be representative of black South African women or those who continue to experience sexual marginalization. This is one story out of countless others that seeks to expose patriarchy and my hope is that it becomes part of a bigger conversation. I know that there are many women who unconsciously or consciously have no problem with patriarchy. I interact with them all the time. I used to be one of them. Some live with it and others defend it with all they have. I know that among them are those who are in the process of questioning it, while others are afraid to do so perhaps out of fear of what they will discover once they begin. It is, it, it is traumatic to find out that so much of what you have been taught to believe and stand for is actually used to control you. Fear can be a tool to keep people trapped. We frequently accept norms in the name of culture and beliefs. All of these must be interrogated. We must decide how to analyze all that we have been forced for force-fed. Some things we need to vomit out of our systems so that the truth may prevail. When you live your truth, there will always be a form of resistance as long as patriarchy is allowed to thrive. I still experiment, experience judgment and disapproval from many who expect me to live my life a certain way. This hampers my hope for freedom, but even if total freedom is not possible right now, we can hope for a future that enables it. We must do this for ourselves and our future generations. Through misbehave, I am attempting to reclaim my voice one word at a time and live my truth to be to the best of my ability. I've scribbled so much in this book, guys. Yo, like, I can't even show you. I'm going to move on to the last because i've got like five minutes i'm gonna move on to my some some parts of my favorite part um which is from i also love uh, the last essay uh, my my feminism um but the 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 one that stands out for me is um self-care as misbehavior which is chapter 10 um she opens this with, uh, if I bring forth what is inside me, what I bring forth will save me. And this is um, taken from uh, No Violet Bulawayo's um, We Need New Names. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of the first part and then I'll go to the back. Self-care as misbehavior. Now that you find yourself here, what are you going to do? The conditioning of black, of black, the conditioning of being black is a nervous one, to borrow from Titi Dangaremba's book title. I will go a step further and say that being a black woman is a nervous condition. So much is expected of you and those who expect it can't see the strain. We demand so much from ourselves as well, having internalized all those expectations. When you fall and something cuts you, 
you have a visible wound and you choose you can choose whether to treat it or not you know that should you leave it in infection may set in if treated it might look bruised for a while and the pain might take some time to subside but it will get better it's easier for us to identify and address external damage however we have a lot of internal damage that is so often ignored denied swept under the carpet or left left to rot so many things in my life have been defined by internal oppression even as i find my way to consciousness the beliefs i have been indoctrinated that i have been indoctrinated with uh, still inform many of my decisions this is what the oppressor sought to do beyond causing external damage to totally screw us over by capturing our ancestors minds causing a trickle down effect for many generations to come and so we must find ways in which we can set ourselves free we must actively participate in our own well-being this means rejecting all notions that keep us afraid of being our true selves um i'm going to move on to um page 52 i'll start it in the middle no and just um at the, yeah at the start i allowed years of suffering to gather inside me and this continued to break down in december 2015 besides the counseling i've done a lot of speaking especially at women's events and conferences at every conference without fail the words watinda mfazi watinta umfazi watinti pokoto you strike a woman you strike a rock and you will die were repeated whenever people interacted with my work they called me mbokoto without fail because i was as hard and uncrushable as a boulder i'm not sure how i feel about being compared to a rock a rock is hard and cold it does not feel and it does not bleed for the women marching against past laws in 1956 to compare themselves to rocks was telling of the kind of societal expectations placed on women when they sang watinda bafazi straydom watinda bafazi watinda mokodo uzakufa they were resisting a brutal system that rele- relegated them to the end of the chain this saying has come to express toughness strength and boldness because as women we are as hard as rocks we are not expected to feel or even to some extent bleed we are expected to continue fighting through the pain never putting ourselves first a friend of mine said that we have embraced pain to a point that we do not feel it we feel like there is something wrong with us we've come to live with this pain and toil and any sign of the ease of pain seems uncomfortable for many another famous saying in this is the sepedi idiom mangwana o tsora tipa ka bogaleng it loosely translates to that a mother is willing to go to any lengths to protect to protect her children even if it means dying for them we all know that what looks we all know what that what what that looks like mothers have always been at the forefront to protect their children no matter what mothers always make a plan mothers will die for their children i've often seen that any old woman is automatically referred to as a mother mother has always been conflated with black woman because black women are conditioned to go over and above for, for others even if it means hurting themselves I don't blame our foremothers for using such an, an analogies to describe themselves. I also understand why we continue to use them to motivate ourselves and give us the fire we need to carry on fighting. Um she she goes on to say um I've always been taught to love your neighbor as you would yourself, but how could I love anyone without loving myself first? loving myself as caring for myself it's realizing that in my schedule i matter and so i should take the time to prioritize myself that in fact i should not be last but should be top of the list i'm not talking about self-care at the expense of others 
I'm talking about the self-preservation that makes you effective in maintaining the welfare of yourself and others. Even as I write this, I'm sensing some guilt and feel the need to explain that I'm only exploring self-care for the benefit of others, to get myself healthy so I may serve longer. I cannot fathom the concept of self-care for my own sake because of how I've been conditioned as a black woman. Yeah. Audrey Lord declared that caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. When she wrote this, she was going through a health crisis. From discovering the first lump in her breast to the cancer spreading to her liver, she wrote about her battle to live with and fight the disease. She discusses death and how a struggle for life is a political struggle. When you are marginalized, you grow up knowing there is a system put in place not to support you, but to harm you and remind you that you belong at the bottom of the ranks. So to fight for survival, to push back against this system is an act of warfare. Her quote reminds me that taking care of myself is essential for my well-being, even though I often feel guilty about it. Lord compares her struggles against cancer to her struggles with anti-black racism. She reflects on how racism can wage war against your immune system, resulting in the slow withering of the body. If we are going to be part of any struggle, we should seek to preserve ourselves. Um, guys, and then she goes on to, um, to actually, um, give uh, a list of a few practices that and beliefs that she she has um integrated into her life um that represent self-care to her and um, what does self-care mean to you so i enjoyed this this essay because um it reminds me to take care of myself it reminds me to um be still and actually know that for me to actually give of myself to my family, um, from my children to my husband, my friends and everyone else, I must be okay first, you know. Um, I must be, my mental health must be fine. I must be okay with, my whole body must be fine. I must be healthy, you know. Um, and yeah, uh, there are also, there is also a 21 day, like a, um <laughs> a part where she talks about um being 20 doing a 21 day challenge um guys this book like just get the book um it is available on the blackbird books um website directly um blackbirdbooks.africa and you can go on to blackbird books instagram which is at blackbirdbooks underscore africa um oh i also uh wanted to to i think the other reason why i wanted to share it is because um yeah i love my level <laughs> she's a queen like mm, and i'm actually grateful that i know her like and we 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 talk but um she's just somebody that makes one reflect on the, the values um reflect on what it means to actually be a feminist you know and to live it and to to just spread love and good vibes so yeah i felt like reading this today and i hope you enjoyed it um for those who came in late um this will be saved on IGTV um, just like all the other um, live reads that I've done um, I've also if you not into if you don't want to like stick around onto um, Instagram you can go on to YouTube um, I do have a YouTube channel where I've loaded um, most of these readings um, yeah uh, it's black it's actually book so book club on um, on uh, YouTube so please go subscribe and yeah go on to the the other book readings that I've done um, but yeah this was my label 
uh, I could read the back of the book for you guys as well for those actually that's what I was supposed to do in the beginning but yeah anyway um, what happens when a black woman decides to live her own life and become who she wants to be when Malewu Sipudi first came across historian Laurel Thatcher Ulrich's quote well-behaved women seldom make history she knew that she was tired of everyone else having a say in who and what she should be. According to Malebo, it is a norm for black women to live according to society's prescribed standards of what, is, what it means to be a well-behaved woman. But what happens when a black woman decides to live her own life and become who she wants to be? She's often seen as misbehaving. Appropriating Laurel Thatcher Ulrich's quote, Malebo boldly renounces societal expectations and shares her journey towards achieving total autonomy and self-determinism. Misbehave is a conversation that will challenge, rattle, and occasionally cause you to reflect on your own life, daring you to ask yourself the question, are you truly living life the way you want to? Um, for those who don't know uh, Malebo, Malebo Sipuri is an activist and writer who takes special interest in gender, development, science, and economics in Africa. She's known as the Lioness, or known as Lioness, and describes her life as nomadic. She's the founder of Lady Leader, a platform that allows black women to just be. Um, so yes, it is a Blackbird Books title, guys. Like, can we please keep Tabiso in business and support blackbird books um yeah go on to www.blackbirdbooks.africa and get your copy and all the other titles are on there for sale and they deliver really quickly actually i saw a tweet the other day a person ordered some uh, a book a few books off the website on a wednesday and they got them on the friday like please forget take a lot blackbird books rocks so yes um, that was misbehave. Um, if you've missed it, please go on to, um, the link in the bio on, um, Bukamoso's bio and it'll lead you to, um, my brand new YouTube channel. Soon I'll be posting stuff like not the readings only, but yeah, I'm not rushing myself, but yeah, that was today's reading guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys to no tomorrow is a holiday. And as a misbehavior, <laughs> as a form of misbehaving, I will be um, taking a break tomorrow as well. So I'll see you on Wednesday and I'll be reading from one of the Gerald Crux um, anthologies over here. Uh, I did announce the name. I will, I will, but I will see you guys at five o'clock on Wednesday. Enjoy your... F um, your holiday tomorrow hi Tulu. you're late but you can watch on youtube um or you can watch here um but yeah thank you guys um i love you i will see you on wednesday thanks for coming and sticking around thank you queen thank you so much don't you just love this cover guys like and this is an actual picture um yeah love it bye